We'll see if we have time to just whip up a super quick and easy clear vinyl pouch like this. So I'll be working on something like this. It's so quick and easy, but you have to be able to troubleshoot working with the clear vinyl on your specific machine. Since I have several machines, I've sewn with the clear vinyl lots of times over the years, so I'm gonna share with you some of my tips and tricks that have helped me uh, make sewing with clear vinyl a lot easier no matter what machine I'm using. Now let's take a couple minutes. I know there's a little bit of a lag. If you can see me and hear me, let me know in the chat box below whether you're watching me on YouTube or on my Facebook page. Uh, let's see, we got Barbara tuning in from New Jersey. Hi, Carol from West Virginia. Wow, we got Gisela tuning in from Sweden. Marilyn from Melbourne. Hello, friend. Uh, Melbourne, Florida, that is. That's a couple hours uh, southeast of us here. All right, great. So it looks like everybody can see me and hear me. Hi, Zelma tuning in from Tennessee. So we are gonna go ahead and get started. One of the things I wanted to show you, for those of you just tuning in, we're gonna see if we can work on this little quick zipper pouch, but before I get to the actual demo of the pouch, it's so easy. All you need is clear vinyl and a zipper, okay? I want to kind of share some tips and tricks and share with you some sample stitches that I've done on my little Juki LB5020 sewing through the clear vinyl. Now, I'm gonna be working with a polyester thread, a good quality one, which is typically what I use when I'm sewing bags of some kind, just because polyester is a synthetic, it's a man-made fiber, and therefore it is stronger than, say, cotton, for example. And I tend to max out all my bags, my pouches, and everything. I want them stuffed to the brim, so I definitely wanna make sure that my stitches and the thread that I'm using for those stitches holds up. All right, so let's go ahead and switch to my over-the-shoulder shot here. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and share with you um, some stitches because if you have a sewing machine that has decorative stitches, this is gonna be a great uh, way for you to use those stitches on clear vinyl because there is no fabric for you to kind of uh, get distracted with on the clear vinyl, even my camera's having a tough time focusing. There we go. All right, so this line here, you can kind of see that it's the thinnest line, and that was just basic straight stitches on my machine, and I'm using red thread, okay? I think you can see it better if I hold it up like that. Then the other straight stitch line, we're gonna jump over to this one, that was done with what uh, is typically called a triple straight stitch. So the machine, instead of just stitching straight like this, like one stitch at a time going straight forward, it goes forward, then back, then forward, then back, and then you get a straight line still, but you can see that the line is a lot bolder because there's more thread buildup, okay? So straight stitch, triple straight stitch. And then I just went ahead and played with a couple of the zigzag stitches. But I did wanna point out something on this far left sample here because this is probably gonna be the most common mistake or, I mean, it's not really that much of a mistake, but it may be an issue that you will encounter when you're sewing with clear vinyl on your sewing machine. If you have a look at the size and the, like the width and the spacing in between these zigzag stitches, you'll notice that right around here, they got a lot tighter, right? Like a lot closer, so the stitch length was shorter here, but the settings were still the same. And that is because the vinyl, the clear vinyl here, got hung up on my machine. And so if the machine cannot pull the vinyl through at a steady pace, then what it does is it kind of stays in place a little bit and the stitches end up being closer together than they would be in a more consistent uh, stitch length like this. So I'm gonna share with you some tips on how you can avoid that, okay? Now, if you have some experience sewing with clear vinyl, go ahead and let us know in the chat box below. I have tutorials and online courses and bags that we've featured organizers in my clubs over the years, and we've used clear vinyl in a lot of different things. So if you want, actually, for those of you that maybe can't stay for the whole time, uh, the demo, or excuse me, the step-by-step -step video tutorial for making this type of a clear vinyl pouch is already up on my YouTube channel. I featured it several years ago in my... Uh, uh, 12 days of last minute DIY gifts. And so we're gonna link to that in the description box and in the chat box here on YouTube and on Facebook so y'all can see how quick and easy it is to make, okay? So this is the little clear vinyl pouch. Um, I see some of you are already sharing your tips for sure. We're gonna go over that. Uh, Katrina says tissue paper helps. We're definitely gonna go over that because the role of vinyl actually typically comes with a tissue paper on it. And so this is the pack. We carry these in our shop. 
And this is from Biannis. If you're familiar with, with Annie, the company's called Biannis, but Annie Unrind is her name. Um, she's a good friend and she has a lot of handbag making projects. She sells handbag zippers, zippers by the yard, all this stuff. And so the clear vinyl is one of the products that they also sell. So we're now carrying these rolls in our online shop. This is a 16 gauge. Okay, and the gauge has to do with the thickness of the vinyl. Uh, 16 gauge, I like to work anywhere between like 10 to 16 gauge. I can work pretty consistently and successfully with those. If you start going thinner in the clear vinyl that you're using, the thinner it is, the more it sticks to itself, the trickier it can be to work with, even though we're gonna go over some tips that will help you as well. But I find like if you're new to sewing with clear vinyl, this 16 gauge is gonna be great, especially for handbag projects, pouch projects like this. I mean, it's sturdy enough that you could store scissors in here without worrying that it's just gonna poke through. Whereas I know some people, and this is good for like learning too, but you may find that you end up having to troubleshoot way more, is buying a clear vinyl that's really thin. I know a lot of people will buy those uh, clear plastic table covers and then they'll use those to make their bags. Be careful that it's not too, too thin, especially if it's being featured in a project where you need to turn the pouch right side out. So if you have a look at this bag here, this one, the side seams as they were sewn, were sewn wrong, uh, right sides together, and then we flipped the pouch um, so that it's, excuse, let me see, yeah. So we sew them like we would fabric, right? Pretty sides touching, and then we flip it right side out so that the seam allowances are actually on the inside. And in order to do that, when you're flipping or birthing a bag, like we call it in bag making, if it's a super clear vinyl, it is gonna be a nightmare. It just sticks to itself, and you're like fighting it and trying to pull it from itself, and it can be a real nightmare. So this 16 gauge one that we're now carrying, again, it's by Biannis, um, is great. You can see the body on it, and if you're familiar with clear vinyl, you know what I'm talking about. The real flimsy one are super drapey, and they can just be, you know, they'll just pull onto themselves. This has really great body, and actually, if you're a student in my 7th uh, edition bag club, you know that today our Bosco bag went live, and this is the fifth bag in that club, and I just wanted to show it to you in an actual project that's not just like a quickie pouch. This is a front clear vinyl pocket. You can see how good and strong this is okay, for a front pocket of this bag. And so if you're in the bag club, check your bag account because the video lessons for this one went up already, okay? So that's a bag. And I, again, have a ton of different projects. I have a clear game day bag. I have a road trip pouch. Some of my organizers feature it as well, this Bosco bag. And the bags for this club are going to be available on our website for sale individually. Since the bag club is now closed, you can't join anymore. Uh, they're gonna be for sale individually starting July 1st. So if you've liked any of the bags and you've kind of been watching us over the past several months seeing the bag projects, be on the lookout for that because we'll send out an email letting you know when they're up and available for sale. All right, let's see. Oh, Iris says, I wanna make a clear bag to attend football games this fall. What's a, a, what's a good bias to use with the clear vinyl? Um, so Iris, I would check out my clear game day bag. It's a video course that I teach and you can check it out to uh, like, even if you just click on the product description page, we'll link for uh, that class to you in the chat now too. And you can check it out so you can see how it comes together. We actually don't use bias. We use fabric strips to finish the top of it off. And I don't have those bags in this room. Otherwise I would try and grab it for you. But yeah, I teach um, a, a bag called the clear game day bag that I think would be perfect for that. And that's why I designed it because you need to have clear bags so that they can see right through it for security and stuff at, at the stadiums. All right. Debbie's asking, so is 10 gauge thinner than 16? It is. Great question. The lower the number, the thinner the gauge. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh my goodness. Jackie B is in my bag club and she says, I've got most of the Bosco bag pieces already cut out. You're a sewing machine. Literally. That is amazing because the class just went up this morning at 9 a.m. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so now let me go through and share with you some little tips. And I'm just going to sew on the same little scrap piece here. Let me pull up my sewing machine before we go into um, cutting out the piece and stitching it to the zipper to make that zipper pouch. Okay, so a couple tips. One, if you don't, my sewing machine's not in the shot yet. Hold on. Let's see, I'll bring it in a little closer. All right, so 
Sometimes if you have a higher end machine or one that comes with a lot of accessories, you'll see that in the accessory pack you may have a Teflon foot. And that is that the bottom of the foot will glide along some fabrics uh, that kind of can cause like a little a bit of tackiness and stick to it like vinyl, pleather, sometimes leather, stuff like that. So if, check your user manual or check your accessory case too and see if your machine came with a Teflon foot. If it did, that would be helpful for sewing the vinyl. However, on my more basic end machines that don't have a Teflon foot, and let's be honest, I don't always grab all these specialty feet. I just make do with what I have most of the time. A quick hack is to take some tape. You can use scotch tape. This is washi tape. I like it because it doesn't gum up my, uh, my presser foot. And I'll just take a piece of this tape and just stick it to the bottom of your presser foot. And it's basically going to just be a little buffer between the metal on your presser foot and the actual clear vinyl. And that's it. So like when you're done working on that clear vinyl project, just peel it off and there's no residue or anything left. So that's a super quick hack. Let's go ahead and try that. But I will say that on this machine, I didn't really have any issues because all these were sewn without anything on it. You can see that the part that I pointed out earlier where the stitches got a little bit hung up, the, the vinyl got stuck to the plastic here on the bed of the machine. So my next tip is for that. Whether it's for your, getting stuck to your presser foot or getting stuck to the plastic on the bed of your machine or even if you have your machine set inside of a table. If you're working with a larger piece of vinyl, sometimes it like sticks to it uh, and then you're like pushing through and then it's like stuck and it won't go all the way and then you'll see it right there in your stitches where they're thrown a little bit off. The next tip is for that and it also helps with the stitches and let me get one that already has the piece separate. So. The roll of clear vinyl is like this, and it comes rolled up on itself, but as it has a tissue paper piece here that is like the buffer so that it's not just all rolled onto itself, which when it gets warmed up, it can kind of get softer and stick to itself. So this tissue paper that comes in here, or any tissue paper, if you have gift wrapping tissue paper, that also works. So this sometimes is helpful to put either underneath the project as you're sewing it, or on top as the buffer, like we're using the tape here, the buffer between the presser foot and the clear vinyl. Wherever you can put that tissue paper in between vinyl getting hung up on metal or plastic, it's gonna help glide it through a lot easier, okay? Oh, uh, <laughs> thank you, Tania. She says, your hair is super shiny and beautiful today. I did use a different gel. It might be that. <laughs> thank you. Okay, let's see. Oh, El Serenity says, you're awesome. I love all your tips. I love sharing tips. And most of my tips I get just from trial and error, from making mistakes that... Um, as I'm working through the projects and that's how people are like, how can you anticipate what's going to happen? I'm like, I've already been there. <laughs> I've made those mistakes so you don't have to. All right. Um, Joan says she's used a shower curtain before to make some projects. So that's a great idea. Just remember that it not be too thin. And I think the shower curtain, like if it's the shower curtain liner, those can be really stiff and really good. Like meaning they're more structured and they're closer to like a 10 or 12 gauge or maybe even a 16 uh, gauge vinyl. The, the sturdier the gauge of the clear vinyl, the easier it will be for beginners to use, okay? All right, let's see. Just making sure I'm not missing nothing. Oh, wow, Cheryl says her husband just bought her the Juki uh, NX7, which is a machine that I have back here. Awesome. She says she loves it now for, uh, for some new bags. That machine has that built-in dual feed that you can put down onto it. So for sewing through multiple layers, that comes in really handy. All right, so let's go ahead and stitch. Now that we have the tape on the bottom of the presser foot as the little buffer, and this is one thing that I do because remember the tape was solid, like it's just one strip. I'll take the thread, put some pressure on it, and pull it back. Sometimes I can cut right through the tape like that. If not, I will just um, take these little thread snips or a seam ripper, and all I'm doing is going in that that slit that's in the presser foot to cut the tape and that way my thread can flow through there and I won't have any issues of it getting jumbled up because it's staying to the front. Okay, so we have that. Now let's go ahead and we're just going to sew some straight stitches here because I want to show you. Uh, we're on straight stitch. Let me get my foot pedal and I'm going to lengthen the stitch length to as long as it will go on here, which is five millimeters. So let's give this a stitch and then um, let's see how it goes. Yes. Oh, that's a great question. I'm getting a question here. Uh, what size needle do you use? So on a thicker gauge vinyl like this, if you're getting the pack from us in our shop, the 16 gauge vinyl, I like to use an 8012 universal needle. 
okay? You don't really, I mean, you'll probably still be able to sew with it because the vinyl goes through like butter. Maybe with a 70-10, but I would stay with at least an 80-12. Now, if you're sewing the clear vinyl too thicker and bulkier layers, like in some type of a handbag project where it's like a clear vinyl pocket being sewn to multiple layers of fabric and interfacing for something else, right, then I would probably go up to a 90-14. But another thing you want to think about, not just in the needle size, is the stitch length, right? Because if your stitches are too short, you may still be able to get through the fabric, but you may be perforating, especially a thinner vinyl, because the stitches are so close together. So if you stitch a seam on a bag, and then say you put some stuff in it, like a little zipper pouch, like the one we're gonna work on here in a bit, and you put stuff in here, and you see that it just like pops out, it may be that uh, you your stitches were so short that you perforated the edge, and then with any pressure, it just like, you know, it's like having a dashed line and you're just like ripping the notebook paper out. So be careful with that. I have not run into that issue at all working with this 16 gauge vinyl. Uh, and so I definitely highly recommend it, especially again, because it has more body and it's going to be easier for beginners to use. So this is it. You can see that the feed dogs are still comfortably pulling the, the fabric through. I'm not even holding it. It's not getting hung up either on the presser foot or on the bed of my machine, right? So we have that washi tape and we have that tissue paper. So for those of you that maybe have never sewn through tissue paper like this or a foundation paper piecing type of a project, you can just stitch right through the paper. It's not a big deal. The thinner the tissue paper, the easier your life will be, especially when it comes to ripping out the tissue. So I stitched through, the tissue paper served the purpose that I needed it to, right? And then look, you just pull it off. So I don't have any bits of tissue paper stuck underneath my stitches, which is great. And the, the longer stitch length definitely helps with that. But now I want to show you something else because I know a lot of you will love the tissue paper uh, tip, but you may run into an issue if you decide to use it, but also uh, do like a zigzag or some type of a decorative stitch. So let's play this game so that again, I make the mistake here so you don't have to. Say you want to do a zigzag stitch and you're thinking, oh, I always use tissue paper when I stitch uh, clear vinyl. So let's go zigzag. So we're going to stitch a row of zigzag stitches, right? Oh, it sews like a dream. The tissue paper, love that tip. And then... When you go to rip off your tissue paper, it comes off, except now there's a ton of tissue paper still stuck underneath your stitches. Good luck trying to get that tissue paper out of there, all right? Because the stitches are now side to side, so that paper is really well and anchored in there. You could try and kind of tug on it, but then what happens is it's gonna come off in little bits like that because it's caught underneath the zigzag and the tissue paper is not thick enough to be strong enough to withstand you pulling it and just happily sliding out. It's not gonna happen, all right? So use the tissue paper technique if you're doing straight stitches, not if you're doing zigzag or other decorative stitches, all right? So that's another tip for y'all there. Let's go ahead and move this out the way. I'm gonna start with my little zipper pouch project. And this um, project, you can do it in any size, right? I'll share with you a couple of general tips for the vinyl and then for the zipper as well. The smaller you make it, and I'm talking like in this size range, like this, okay? It's going to be easier to make this size pouch or in this general area, size area, right, versus a bigger one. Because, especially if you're working with a thinner gauge vinyl than the 16 gauge vinyl that I'm using here, the thinner the vinyl, the more pliable it is and the more it will wanna move on you. So the longer the distance that you need to st stitch a zipper to that edge, the more likely you are to distort this top. And because you need to have the same stitch length here and here, meaning this vinyl needs to span the same distance as what I sew to the bottom edge of my zipper, you're gonna wanna minimize the distance that you're sewing, if that makes sense. Because if I go 13 or 14 inches, chances are I'm gonna run into an issue where it starts to distort. And when you go to sew on the other side, you can end up with kind of a, a skewed zipper application because of that. So try it out at the smaller size, Try out using all the tips that I'm sharing with you here today, and if you get it down pat and it works like a dream, then you can kind of build up from there and try different shapes and, and bigger pieces, okay? 
All right. Um, Debbie has a great suggestion. She says, can you use water to get it out, that tissue paper? You probably can. I've never tried it. If it's a real thin one, especially like the really cheap gift wrapping tissue paper, I don't see why not. That, that's actually a great idea. So yeah, thanks for sharing that. If somebody tries it or has tried it, let us know in the chat below. Um, yeah, Jackie B says, unless you want to pick it all out with a pin. Yeah, no. And uh, you can try it. And sometimes it's like, maybe will I use a pin or will I use a seam ripper? If you use a seam ripper, you're going into stitches. So if you clip one of those zigzag stitches by mistake, now you've cut your thread, right? Or the same thing with a pin. If you kind of start tugging on the stitches themselves just to get the little tissue paper out, you run, uh, uh, you can run into a problem of loosening or even busting through those stitches. So I think the water one sounds like a good idea. Maybe some lukewarm water and just run it through there, agitate it a little with your finger. It should work. Okay, great. So I was saying about keeping the bag to a smaller, somewhat smaller size. Then the next tip is going to be to use a zipper that is a good bit larger <laughs> than the top edge of your vinyl, okay? At least if you're gonna be doing this application technique that I'm gonna show you here. So I have one solid piece. If you joined us for my Whip Wednesday episode where I made what I called like the quickest zipper pouch, remember it was like unlined, and we just stitched the zipper to one side, and then the full piece like this ends up getting folded, right? And then you have the zipper come down like that. Okay, so it's one continuous strip that just one short edge gets sewn to one end of the zipper or one edge of the zipper tape and the other one to the other. This is the same idea, except it's even easier because we're just gonna take the, the short edge of our vinyl and place it directly on top of the zipper. As long as that vinyl is not on top of your zipper teeth, you're gonna be good because you'll still have a working zipper. So the idea is just place it over top of the zipper tape and straight stitch or zigzag stitch across here. Okay, now a couple things to note. Make sure that your zipper is longer than the piece of clear vinyl that you're working with. Let's go ahead and measure what I have cut out here. I have this, uh, the vinyl piece itself measures eight inches across by, doo -doo -doo, by 14 and a half inches long. So eight by 14 and a half. And so the zipper I'm using here is actually a 14 inch zipper. The reason you want this to be longer is because the way that the opposite short edge gets sewn to the other side of the zipper tape after this has already been sewn, this part is gonna be still, is gonna be connected, right? So you wanna have extra on either end. Now I prefer to have more extra on this side when I'm doing it with the clear vinyl here. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna take my clear vinyl and I'm just gonna place it closer to this edge, but I'm still leaving myself several inches. And it, we're just gonna place it on top there. And then I'm gonna place a clip on either end. You don't really wanna pin through clear vinyl. It's the same thing for leather, cork fabric, and stuff like that, that is a, a non-fraying uh, fabric. If you put a pin through there, you're gonna poke a hole and, and you'll see it. It won't like close up like cotton fabric does. So just put a couple clips like that. Another thing that you may want um, or you may think about doing is using wash away wonder tape. I have never used it on clear vinyl and tried to wash it off. If somebody has done that before, let us know. Otherwise, I have steer clear of uh, trying to use the wash away wonder tape here because you'll see it through the clear vinyl since it's clear. So um, I would probably stay away from doing that unless you try it out on a sample piece and, and make sure that you can wash it off, right? Because the clear vinyl bags are not like our other cotton and fabric bags that we just throw in the wash, well, <laughs> that I just throw in the washer and the dryer. <laughs> Some of y'all might treat your bags better. I just throw them in the wash. All right, let's see. Oh, awesome. You're welcome, Lois. She says, thanks for the good tips and how you take time to show them. You're welcome. Hey, April, thanks for tuning in. Kathy says she's enjoying the info on the vinyl from Nova Scotia, Canada. Well, welcome. Thank you for tuning in and joining us. Oh, you see, Casey says, can you use a double-sided tape to stabilize the zipper before sewing? So Casey, try it out and let us know in the bag group. We'll see. I've never tried it, um, like for, for the same reason I was just saying. Um, but yes, we're all thinking along the same lines here. This is how we learn so much. All right. Oh, Mary, great question. She says, is the zipper pull up or down? It is up. It is pretty side face up. So this is just getting applied onto. So yes, you will have a raw edge of vinyl underneath your zipper tape. That's how we have it, right? The vinyl doesn't fray 
and it's just sewn right, right on top. Let me focus in on the bag like that. It's just placed on top and sewn down. Now here's another thing that you need to know. You have to sew this with your regular presser foot. Why is that? Well, because the zipper foot is designed to allow you to sew straight stitches really close to the zipper teeth. I'm going to use zigzag stitch here. So if, and we talked about this, I believe it was last Whip Wednesday where we were like, have any of you broken a needle um, because you left like the zipper foot on and then stitched like a zigzag stitch on it? That's exactly what would happen. This is designed to be like right there, straight stitch. And so if you go zigzag, you may run the risk, depending on your machine settings, where the needle hits the foot itself. I'm going to go ahead and try to do it from here. This is not my best sewing because I'm not in a good angle, right? Seated at the sewing machine, but I just want y'all to, sh to show you what I'm talking about. So it's just placed on top. It's not all going to stay steady for you. So this is a great project also to practice holding and manipulating fabric as it's going through the sewing machine. So I'm going to place this down. My zipper foot is not completely cleared of the zipper teeth. So I may scoot it down some or scoot it over some just so that I can right there should be okay. Once you get a few kind of anchoring stitches down, it makes it a lot easier to just like hold it and go. All right, so I have this on a zigzag stitch. I'm going to change the width, um, like the zigzag width to, let's go with four millimeters, decent size. And then the stitch length, I do want it to be spaced out a little bit more. Mine defaulted to 1.5 millimeters, which is kind of tight. So I'm gonna go up to like 2.5. Let's try that. So I'm gonna hold the first bit, Get my foot pedal right. Make sure I'm stopping with the needle down. And I'm just taking a few stitches and then I'm just gonna hold it steady. Once it's anchored down, stop with the needle in and then continue. Let me try to get a better look on this. The cool thing too about the vinyl is that if and when it moves on you, it's clear. So, <laughs> It should still look okay when you when you finish stitching it, right? Oh, I went off a little bit. Anyways, I'll try to make up for it here. Let's see if I can get this right back on track. Don't move on me. It's a weird angle. Oh, I'm going to have to rip this out. I'm not too happy with it, but you get the idea. And notice I didn't put the tissue paper under here, so you may have to kind of keep an eye on it that it doesn't get hung up on the plastic. You could also tape a piece of tissue paper down on the bed of your machine just to help keep it there as a buffer. And, and one last thing that you'd have to worry about if you taped it. Uh, not too bad. It's kind of lower than I would have liked, but it's still there. Okay? Then... This short end needs to come around and be sewn here in the same way on top. Let me clip these thread tails. This needs to be sewn on top, right? But I can't run it through my sewing machine like this because then I'm going to be sewing through all the layers, okay? So the way I like to do it is just position it where it goes. Oh yeah, my daughter's definitely getting this one. <laughs> I'm going to line it up so that it's aligned with the other uh, edge of the vinyl, like that. I'll do the same thing with another clip on the opposite end. So this is like how I often teach. You all he will hear me say like, place it visually the way that it's supposed to look once the pouch or the bag is done. So that's what we're doing here. It's gonna go on top. So place it, clip it. Don't move. After it's in place, I know that that edge needs to be sewn right there, but now I can open the zipper, scoot it, and then orient whatever I need to orient to make sure that these clipped edges stay where they are to sew it at the sewing machine, okay? Let's see. Oh, Marilyn says, I have put several strips of blue painter's tape on the bed of my machine so the vinyl doesn't stick to it as I sew. And painter's tape is great, similar to how I use the washi tape under the presser foot because it doesn't leave any tapey residue. So if you have like a masking tape or a paint painter's tape, that would be awesome too. Um, Gloria is asking, do you backstitch when you're stitching the zipper? In this case, no, because we still have to sew up the side seams. And so whenever I have an intersecting seam, I don't really bother with the backstitching because I know there's going to be another line of stitching that's going to come across and perpendicular to that. 
All right. Oh, Debbie says, how about water soluble stabilizer? I've seen some that are a little tackier than others, but I bet you if you had like a really thin one, that would probably work well. All right. Uh, oh, Rashmi is asking, which sewing machine are you using? This is the Juki LB5020. I know there's several of you on the wait list for the machine because we sell them in our shop, but they are currently uh, back ordered right now. So whenever you're looking, and this is just in general, if you're looking to purchase a product from our online shop and you see that it's out of stock, there will always be like a wait list button. You can click on it, enter your email address, and then whenever whatever product it is that you're waiting for is restocked, you'll receive an email letting us know, letting you know from us that it's back in stock. So the Juki machines are currently sold out. These ones, the LB 5020s that I use here. Um, Delta SR Mist says you could glue the zipper. So you could, but whatever glue you use will show through the clear vinyl. So just keep that in mind. Um, that's the same thing Bonita is, is saying. You could, could you not use a glue stick to glue the vinyl and the zipper together? You could. Um, Usually when we do a glue basting technique, and y'all have seen me use my washable Elmer's glue with the little tip that I get from my friend Laura's um, Etsy shop, we typically use the glue basting on cotton fabrics to help keep things together, and then we dry and set the glue with the heat of a hot iron. So if you glued this, you just have to let it air dry, I suppose, because you're obviously not going to hit it with an iron, um, and then I would be afraid of, of it showing through the clear vinyl right? Because it's just right on top. All right. So this is clipped in place and I could have sworn I stitched it further over, but I didn't. Um, remember how I shifted it this way some let's, um, so it's clipped in place and now I just need to position it, whoop, position it in my machine the way that it needs to be sewn. So let's go ahead and do that. And actually, you know what, let's go ahead. I'm going to show you, um, for those of you that maybe are not fans of the zigs, oops, the zigzag um, stitch. If you wanted to get really close, you could install your zipper foot. Just remember to do a straight stitch. So why not? Let's try it. We're all here for demo and educational instructional purposes. I have plenty of clear pouches, y'all. <laughs> I can uh, risk this one just to show you a different thing. Okay, so I'm going to put it here. Try not to move it. This is one thing. When you clip it in place, try not to move it because you can't just place that edge of vinyl anywhere on the zipper tape. It needs to align with the opposite side. Otherwise, you'll end up like attaching the vinyl to one section and then the opposite end to another and they won't match up. I mean, it may work out if you have like a slanted zipper. It might look kind of cool if you're going for that type of a look. But if you want a regular pouch, that wouldn't be it. So... Now that my zipper's open, actually, I'm going to put a couple more clips here just to keep these things from moving. You can remove your free arm, drape this over, and now we're going to try it with a straight stitch just to show you the difference. And you can see the difference, too, in the way that it looks. If you don't like the way zigzaggy um, stitches look, a straight stitch would be cool, too. All right. Ha! Ha! Let me make sure I go back. You see, we were about to break a needle right on camera. I need to go back to straight stitch on here. I could see it though, that the needle is aligned right on top of the metal part of the zipper foot. When you see that, do not start stitching. <laughs> All right, let's go to the regular one and the stitch length. I'm gonna do like a 2.6 to 3.0 millimeter stitch length. That tends to work out good. And I am in the shot, okay. Quick and easy if you're doing straight stitch. Okay. Oh, Delta SR says, I have a clear glue stick, just a smidge. Definitely try it. If y'all are not in, if you make bags and you've done my bag projects, tutorials or courses and clubs, if you're not on the Facebook group, definitely give it a look up. You can request to join and one of my admins will let you into the group. Um, it is called Crafty Gemini Bag Clubs, Video Bag Club, something like that. That is like our bag related, dedicated, private Facebook group 
If you are looking for bag making inspiration, that is the place to be. We share so much, uh, so many pictures, tips, tricks, hacks to all my different bag projects, all that stuff. So if you look up that Facebook group, that would be great. So here you can kind of see. It's cool. I use red thread on a red zipper, so you can't even really see that one has zigzag and one has straight stitch. <laughs> These are cool projects too. Um, the way that I've done them before when I used to teach a lot of little kids is using variegated threads. So if we just had clear vinyl and say a white zipper or a black zipper, I would put them um, like rainbow colored threads in the sewing machines. And that way, any little bobble or if they, you know, do too many back stitches and stuff like that, all you're seeing is more color on more color and it looks awesome. So think about that too. Maybe if you're spending this summer teaching a, a child or a young one, I froze. That's that front camera, huh? This one was moving. All right, so we'll, let's go ahead. We're just going to reset the front camera here since I'm frozen in time. All right, so this has been sewn. Not bad. And then I'm going to open my zipper. Can I keep going, though? Because this one is the one that's showing. Okay, great. So I open the zipper. I'm going to flip this whole thing wrong side out. Then I'm going to close my zipper about halfway, like here. Okay. So all we're going to do uh, next, like to finish off the bag basically, is to stitch down the sides. And the reason you open your zipper, you can even open it up bigger than that, is uh, twofold. One, we want to have a working zipper pull when we're done with the little bag, okay? But two, once you stitch down the sides, you need an opening up here to flip this right side out through, okay? So the zipper pull needs to be inside the space of where the vinyl begins and ends because if you leave it to the outside, you stitch down the sides and you trim away the excess, you won't have a working pull inside. Go the other way. Uh, yeah, like that, the way you're going. Ta-da! And then pull it a little bit down towards you. <laughs> down towards you. The handle down. There. Ah, that's it. Perfect. Okay. So I have it there. Notice how this one is that we have about an inch or so of the clear vinyl at the top. That's what you want to do. When we have this, it's basically a loop, right? If you wanted the zipper in the middle, you could put it in the, in the middle, but it's kind of a waste, right? We want a taller pocket to hold our goodies inside. So I just set it up so that there's about an inch of the vinyl at the top. And then you want to make sure that that amount runs the whole way. So you could use a ruler and measure. Y'all know that I love a good eyeball measurement, okay? Let's see. Stephanie says, now would you use a Teflon foot when sewing any vinyl? Yes, any vinyl, even if it's like a textured vinyl with color and stuff. And again, I say yes kind of loosely. Y'all have seen me sew vinyl on here. You've seen me sew cork uh, on this little entry-level sewing machine with just a regular presser foot. I have found that in the past maybe eight years or so, since I switched mostly to just using Juki machines mostly for sewing at least, that I don't really have to do the stuff of like, oh, I got to remember to change a walking foot when I'm sewing this. I got to put on the Teflon foot. I just don't really have those issues anymore. Oh. Uh, but it's going to depend on the fabric and your machine. So yes, if you have a Teflon foot, put it on. It's not going to make anything worse, right? You may be able to sew it without it, but if you have it, use it because it will, it'll, it'll help, you know? Um, but say you use a Teflon foot and it doesn't help. Go ahead and add tape to the bottom of the Teflon foot. Why not? Try that. Do the tissue paper thing. Try the, um, the painter's tape tip, you know? All those tips, you can compound them one on top of the other to, to help you, right? Complete your project with more successful results. All right, so I'm trying to see what I'm looking like here. Once I have it pretty much the same distance up at the top, I'm going to place some clips so it doesn't roll on me. Good. And then I'm going to hold this together here. Come down, and then we're going to just stitch down the sides. You can do a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Remember what I said earlier about the stitch length and stitching through vinyl. If you're doing a straight stitch, make sure that that length is not, um, I'm going to swap out back to my regular foot. Um, don't, um, what was I saying? Oh, don't 
uh, have your stitch length be too short because then you can perforate it. But again, this is a thicker vinyl, a 16 gauge vinyl that we sell in our shop. And so I haven't had a problem. I even tried to like pull on two sample pieces that I did yesterday and um, they wouldn't come apart. So we're good there. But just keep that in mind because I know a lot of you, there's such a big um, difference in how thick the vinyl is that you're working on. And I don't want you to think, well, I did what she said and it just like perforated it. Make sure that the stitch length is not that short. Okay. Um... Do, do, do. Oh, Carla says, by the way, I love your shirt. Guessing you made it. Of course I did. This is the Jali 3215 pattern, the, the raglan t-shirt. I taught an online course for this. I mean, I still do. It's in our online shop for the PDF workshops. It's the raglan t-shirt. Oh, 3245, I think is the number. Yeah. So yeah, this is um, a cotton jersey fabric. They don't make it anymore. This is my friend Carolyn Friedlander designed this. You might have seen it in a quilting cotton. It's like really popular in modern quilting circles, but they have it in a cotton spandex too. Robert Kaufman put it out in a jersey fabric, and then the sleeves are just a navy cotton spandex that I used. The shirt is probably, I just was telling my husband that before we went live. I was like, I made this shirt like three or four years ago. I'm like, and it still looks good. This thing has been washed a couple hundred times, at least. Okay, so... Quarter inch seam, we're on our straight stitch. Length is 2.6 on this machine. Uh, you could do the triple straight stitch here too. Now, because you saw me back stitch there, because this is the last seam, remember I said, if I'm gonna have another seam that's gonna intersect with one, then I don't bother back stitching. But these are the final two stitch, uh, two lines of stitching, so I am gonna back stitch just to secure it. Okay. Did I blank out again? Oh, okay. All right. I can probably stand to move this in a little bit more. All right, and I'm just gonna go straight down. And you know, one thing I was thinking about earlier today was if you have seen my um, pinched zipper pouch project, you could do that with this clear vinyl as well, right? You would go like that and pinch it. So you could do it because remember in that video tutorial that I did several weeks ago, I said that you could use um, like any faux leather cork or vinyl that didn't fray. So this would actually, with the 16 gauge vinyl, because it has such good structure, if you pinch the bottom a good bit, it would stand up on its own. So for those of you that know which project I'm talking about, think about that. More ideas, more ideas, and a lot more projects that you can make. All right. Oh, some people were saying Facebook was acting up too on them. Oh, I had a little thread nest here. I didn't pull my tails out before I started. Okay, that should be all right. Next up is the opposite side. Make sure that your zipper is open because this is the last seam that we need to sew. And so you definitely want to make sure, smooth things out. Make sure I'm not going to end up with any bubbling here or anything. Okay, good. All right, so let's start. Needle down, my edges are aligned. I got the back stitch. There we go. Let me cut these guys off. <laughs> when you're cutting your threads, try to use your thread snips. I have them right here and I'm using huge scissors <laughs> before you cut a hole right in your project. Okay, next up, let's go ahead and trim away the excess zipper tape. Gone gone. We have our zipper pull in there, so that's good. Now another thing I like to do is to trim away the seam allowance to make it even narrower. It's easier to sew a chunkier seam allowance. I mean, I'm a quilter. We're calling a quarter inch chunky. I know some of you are like, yeah, that's really narrow. But I like to trim it down even further because it makes it less bulky in the seamed areas, especially since I've sewn this right sides together to then turn it out. You could also have just sewn it pretty side facing out and left it like this and then took pinking shears or just trimmed it really flush and left the raw edge of the vinyl sticking out on the sides. That works too, right? Depending on who is you're making it for, if you're teaching a kid and like flipping this right side out is a little bit too much, right? Like, you know, their attention span is not 
um, that great. Now, it helps to just like boom, boom, flip it right side, just leave the raw edge, trim it up for them and be like, ta-da, look what you made. So I always try to set up my students for success, whether kids or adults. So that's just kind of another little hack to make it quicker and easier to make the same type of a pouch. Okay, let's see. Um, okay, perfect. So uh, another tip here is to use a lighter to kind of just melt and fuse down the edges of the zipper. You can melt the vinyl, so just be careful, but I'm going to do it here because over time, the, um, the raw edges of that cut zipper, since they are exposed, okay, I mean, they'll be exposed, but on the inside, I'm just going to secure them by locking them, by melting them a little bit. Obviously, this is not a step for kids, but just like that. So I trimmed off the excess seam allowance on one side. Oh, actually, I'm going to have to do this again because I had not trimmed this one yet. So one thing that I do, too, remember we talked about the um, triple straight stitch, which was this bolder, darker sample that I showed you here. I was surprised to see that that didn't perforate it. So if you use a longer, a slightly longer stitch length and do a triple straight stitch, it ends up being really secure. Now, I'm speaking to that on this 16-gauge vinyl. That may not be the case if you're working with a really flimsy vinyl. So test, 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 and practice on what you're using, what you have at home. All right, so once that's done, we're going to finish turning this or opening the whole zipper and then turning it right side out. Here's going to be the tricky part when you are working with a thicker vinyl. Let me make sure I'm not busting through with my zipper pull. When you're working with a stiffer vinyl, it is stiffer, so it's going to be harder to flip right side out. So what I'm going to do is actually warm it up some. Here comes another tip to make it a little bit more pliable. This is where having the thinner vinyls actually helps. Let me plug up my iron real quick. So this part will probably take me longer than making the pouch. <laughs> but again, that's just if you want to have those seams on the inside. So I'm going to reach in here, try not to rip this whole thing apart. See what I mean? It's nice and stiff. So we're going to have to get rid of some of the wrinkles anyway. But if you're, and I've done this before with like an eight gauge vinyl, you could, let me check if my iron is warming up. You heat up your ironing board and then you would run the vinyl over top of it and then manipulate it as it's warmed up because that me makes it more pliable. But you can see how sturdy this stuff is. I've made so many uh, organizers before where we put like sharp um, sewing tools, scissors, rotary cutters, that kind of stuff and it works out really well. So I'll just take my time and poke out all these corners. You're welcome, Willow March. <laughs> Jesus, thanks for all the tips. All right. I'm going to kind of do a quickie job here just because I want to show you all it closed up. But you get the idea. Hot, hot iron. Can you see how that steamed up a little bit? I don't know if that showed up on camera. But it literally just relaxed. Like I put my hand there and it just relaxed when it hit the warm. So you're not going to hit it with the iron. You warm up your ironing board and then warm it so that you make it slightly more pliable. Come on. All right. Run my fingers along the edge. Anyways, you get the idea. You just finish poking out those corners. Do not use scissors or maybe chopsticks would work. I wouldn't use my usual knitting needle here, even though this is a, a sturdier vinyl. I'm like saying I'm not going to do it, and I'm just like, eh, maybe just a little bit. <laughs> maybe you can use like this blunt end, the rounded end of this bamboo knitting needle. No, my fingers work better. But just don't use anything sharp because you'll poke a hole right through it. It's like poking something through a plastic bag. There we go. Perfect. My pointer finger. And the flimsier, keep this in mind, if, if you're using a thinner vinyl, it will be easier to flip out in terms of the rigidness of it, but then it gets stuck to itself and um, it can be trickier in that sense. So just think about, you know, whether you want to have it like this with the raw edges on the inside or not. It's up to you. Ooh. 
warm it up a little bit. I still have to poke out these top two corners, but there it is. You can see the general shape. You know, just take your time to poke them out, and then it'll pretty much maintain that shape if you're using the thicker vinyl. Okay? Super cute. Francine says, love, love that iron warming process. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and put some of these markers in here so you can see what it looks like. This one is a little bit narrower, but you can change up the dimensions of it. Just again, remember what I said, make sure that you're not starting off like your first one, this huge, huge pouch piece or clear vinyl piece. Um, the, the smaller section for you to sew, the more manageable it will be. And then the zipper, make sure that you have a zipper that's longer than it just to, for making that second seam a little bit easier. I think that looks super cute. Okay. Oh, I got to poke out that corner, but yeah. <laughs> Can you tell I'm such like an annoying kind of perfectionist? It's crazy because sometimes I'm really perfectionist and sometimes I'm like, eh, who cares? So it's weird. It's a constant battle in my head. Okay. Um, Faith says, what about some warm water? I mean, I, I don't see why the warm water wouldn't work. I just don't know how I feel about, you know, having everything be all wet and my hands like trying to do it. I really like this technique. You could also, um, it's basically just to have some type of a buffer between the vinyl and, um, the heat, whatever the heat source is. So you could do like, um, wrap it in like hundred percent cotton fabric and then press that carefully, like with the cotton on top so that the heat is going through, but it's not directly on plastic. Make sense? So whatever technique you want to use for that, that would be cool. Okay. So that is that. Okay. So that's, I got to making the little project. We're still good on time. And that is that. Remember that I have a step-by-step -step video tutorial on how to make this pouch on my YouTube channel already. Um, and so you can check that out if you didn't get to watch the full demo from the beginning. Up to you. A lot of different uses. I know I have one in my uh, other space where I have like crochet hooks in it. Um, I wanted to find one today and I told my daughter, do you have one of these so that I can show for the demo? And she's like, yeah, it's in my room. So this one is actually one that she made. Pretty good. She did it maybe when she was seven years old, so not bad. Um, so that's that. And then remember, if you want to check out the clear vinyl that we use here today, if you want to get a roll, this is 16 gauge vinyl, so it, uh, 16 gauge vinyl, so it's nice and sturdy, great shape and structure to your bag projects and pockets. And the roll is 16 inches by 54 inches, so it's a yard and a half long of 16 inches. If you're buying one of these to make these pouches, I mean, you can make a ton, a lot, like over a dozen of them. Okay. So what else? This is there. If you're in the bag club, check out the Bosco bag videos because we posted these already. If you're not in my bag club and you missed out joining, uh, each of the five bags in this bag club will be for sale individually on our website starting July 1st. And I'll send out an email and that's it. Thank you all for tuning in for whip Wednesday, number 36. Um, yeah. And I will see y'all next week with another fun demo or project. Bye.